In this video, we will cover how to configure RISC service with advanced authentication to enable context-aware adaptive authentication. There are two parts to the use case we'll be configuring today. One is the risk evaluation criteria, which is used to determine the risk of the authentication request. And second, the authentication method required based on the calculated risk. So there are four criteria that we'll be looking at. One is whether the user is logging in from an approved IP or a known IP. A known IP is the IP address that the user had used previously and has successfully authenticated. Second is whether the user is logging in during normal business hours. Third is whether the user is logging in from a known device. And fourth is whether the user has previously accessed any secure application and has successfully authenticated. Let's consider three types of users. One would be a low-risk user, who so might be an employee who's logging in from the office. He might meet all of these criteria, and we would simply ask him to log in using his username password. So this whole risk process is very transparent to this user and provides an ease of use. Second might be a medium-risk user. So the same employee might go home and he'd log in from home. In this case, we could prompt for a password and an OTP. The third category might be a high-risk user who might be just a hacker trying to hack into the system. In such cases, in order to deter such users, we could go for multi-factor authentication. The risk evaluation criteria are defined in risk service and what to do once a risk is determined is configured in advanced authentication. There are four configuration steps involved. Step one is to add the license. This service is a licensed feature of advanced authentication. Step two is to enable user history. This is an optional step. However, enabling user history helps you to have a far more dynamic access control that's not just based on the rules defined by the administrator, but is also modified based on user's past behavior. Step three would be to configure the risk rules and the risk policy. Step four is to configure the authentication chains. And step five is any miscellaneous administration like viewing logs. Step one, adding a license. On the advanced authentication UI, go to the licenses and say new license and upload the license that you purchased for a service and it would show up here as a risk service. Once this is done, step two would be to enable user history feature. And choose the user history database option. Enable it. You could use the built-in uh, Postgres that is shipped with the uh, advanced authentication, but we do not recommend it for production, mainly because the amount of data that would get collected would grow significantly on production systems. So it's best to have a database that's outside of the appliance so you'd have a better control of the disk space available and the database ad administration. If you have an external database available, choose this option and provide the database connection details. You would also have to install the schema required by the history database. Let me choose the built-in option for now and save it. So step three is to configure risk policy and the corresponding risk service rules. So on the risk settings page, there is an option called create sample data. Click on that. This automatically will create a demo policy and certain rules. So let's start with that. Click on the demo policy. So we see the three rules are configured, IP rule, cookie rule, and the time of login rule. So let's look at the IP address rule. The rule says that if the user is logging in from this IP range, then he is a safe user. You could remove this and you could add your own IP ranges for your network so that you are covering everybody who is logging in from within your network. You could also use the is not option if you want to specify the list of blacklisted IPs. So basically, if you want to allow all users who are not coming from any of the blacklisted IPs. 
you could specify the list of IPs in a file and upload it or you could even have a, provide a URL that provides you the list of whitelisted or black, blacklisted IPs and compare the user's IP address against this dynamic list. Finally, enable this check user history option. What this would do is that in addition to allowing users from this predefined set of IPs, we would also allow users based on the user's past IP addresses. So it kind of adds to the prescribed list and tailors it to the user's behavior. So let me save it. So let's look at the cookie rule. For example, this could be a cookie that was set by the secure application. So the fact that the cookie exists indicates that the user was able to successfully authenticate to the secure application. This is the time of login rule. If the user is logging in from Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 p.m., then reduce the risk of the user. Let me also add one more rule. The last login rule. So if the user has logged in from this device in the past, let's say, in the past 10 days, then consider it as a low risk. So let me give a name for the cookie that we would set. I also want to configure the risk level. The risk levels say that if the user, let's say, if the user fails three or more rules, then it's a high risk. And if the user just fails just one rule, he could be a low risk user. Next step is to configure the authentication chains. Before we look at the configuration, here's a quick picture to show how all the configurations tied up. Advanced authentication event references a risk policy, which in turn has the rules. And uh, an event lists the different chains. So what we have to do is to configure three chains uh, to be enabled depending on the risk level. So if the user is a medium risk user, he would not see the option of the low chain, but instead he would be given the option to log in with either using the medium chain or the high chain. So let's look at the chain configuration. There are already three chains configured, one for low risk, medium risk, and high risk user. So for low risk, we have chosen the method to be low LDAP password. And the risk setting is configured saying this chain is applicable if the risk level is low. Let me try to log in with the user Adrian Boss. This mimics the use case of where the user is logging in from home. Uh, I've configured in such a way that the IP address of that's configured in the rule does not match my own. So I should evaluate to a medium risk user. And yes, so we see the two options are available, the medium risk chain and the high risk chain. Do notice that the low risk option of just logging in with the password is not available. So let me choose the OTP plus password. Yep, so I'm in. So the user was able to log in successfully uh, with the second factor authentication. Let me now log out and log back in again. Same user. The only difference is that I've had a successful login. So this IP should go into my um, known IP, which means that my risk should be reduced now. So now I can see the option to log in with just the password because I'm considered as a low risk user. So I logged in with the password, I'm in. So this brings us to the end of that demo.
So I just want to show you one final thing before we close. This is where you could find the logs for, for a service. And you would see the, the rules that were executed and uh, the result of the rules. So it says this level was low for our last attempt. And um, one final thing, the NAT settings, if your setup is behind NAT, you can specify the, the header that has the actual IP address that you want to process and how to parse that, uh, the value that is sent in the header. So that brings us to the end of service configuration with advanced authentication. Thank you.